Welcome back to day three of reviewing the men's 2020 Australian Open. The world number two Novak Djokovic is back in action this morning in a secured a straight sets win over the young Japanese talent Tatsumo Ito. A quick word on Ito, I thought he competed very well, particularly in the second set, when you consider his inexperience uh, on these courts against this calibre of opponent. Uh, I thought he handled himself very well. He can take a lot of pride in his performance, uh, a lot of positives and move on and have a very good season. On to Djokovic, it was a workmanlike performance, uh, it was a straight sets victory uh, in just over an hour and a half, which is important, uh, conserving energy for later down the line in the tournament. I thought he served particularly well, and he mentioned that himself uh, in his press conference. Over the past few years, I think we've seen a massive uh, transformation in Djokovic's serve. It's one of his biggest weapons now. Uh, his second serve is a lot better, he uses the construct points a lot better than he used to, um, and it's important that he keeps it up later on in the tournament. His return of serve is probably the shot of the decade, if not the best shot we've ever seen. Um, if he can get that return of serve up to the stand that I can get to for later stages in the tournament, he's going to be very, very tough to beat. Uh, he puts his opponent under a lot, a lot of pressure uh, with that return of serve. Uh, constant depth, um, very aggressive. And if he serves well, um, it's a match made in heaven, really. So he moves on to round three to face another Japanese player, Nishioka. He defeated the Brit, Dan Evans, in straight sets. Um, it was a case of who adapted the conditions better really. The court played slow, it was a very windy day in Melbourne which caused a lot of problems for a lot of players. Uh, in particular Dan Evans, he, as we know he likes to red line the ball. Uh, very very good single handed backhand, very good forehand and he never really adapted, he, he didn't vary up his game enough. Um, he, he just went for his backhand and too much down the line, too deep. Uh, made too many unforced errors to win a match at Grand Slam level. Um, Nishioka, I thought he varied up his game very well. He uh, used the slice and he, he, he almost just waited for Evans to make, make unforced errors, uh, which gave him the match really. But he served it out well, he took his break points chance and he moves on to face Djokovic in round three. Uh, I think Nishioka can give Djokovic a few problems, but you would expect Djokovic to win that one in straight set to move on to round four. Um, probably the uh, tie of the round for me for so far is Marion Cilic against Benoit Pair. Uh, Chilich came through that one of five sets, which I was very surprised about. I thought Pear would win that match. Um, when I saw the forecast for Melbourne yesterday being very windy, uh, and coupled that with the courts playing slow this week, I thought it was a match made in heaven for Ben Pear. With these variations, with these drop shots, I thought he'd have Chilich moving around the court, which he did. He played his part in a brilliant match. It was probably the favourite match of the tournament for me so far. Uh, very high quality, very entertaining points. Fair play to Cilic. I thought he adapted to the conditions very well. That didn't suit him. Being six foot six, he likes to use his big serve on a quick court, finish the points early, get into the net and volley. Um, he done that. He done that very well despite the conditions. Um, he also moved very well. I haven't seen Cilic move as well as that for a long time. Probably since he won the U.S. Open against Nishikori a few years ago. Uh, he was very good on the run, very good on his backhand side, and he passed Ben Rapper a number of times. Um, with his backhand at the net and Cilic didn't have his best of years in 2019 I think he'll admit that himself he didn't have the best results particularly in Grand Slams so this is a great start for him if he can beat Pear who's in the top 20 now and he's been playing very well in uh, hard courts over the past 8 eight month this is a massive win for Cilic a good confidence booster he closed the match out strongly and if he can continue this sort of form continue to serve well um, and if the conditions fall right from on the day, there's no reason why he can't make a big run this year's Australian Open. Another cracking match yesterday was Berrettini against Sangren. Um, again, for Berrettini, similar to Dan Evans, the conditions just didn't suit and he just failed to adapt. Uh, we know Berrettini's a power player. He likes to hit his brutal ground strokes uh, deep and wide, but the wind just carried them really mid 49 unforced errors. And I think moving forward for Berrettini, he's only 22. He obviously qualified for two finals last year, so he's a very talented player. Um, part of that next gen that are looking to break through in the next couple of years. Uh, but I think he just needs to learn to adapt. Uh, can he vary his, his game up a bit more? Can he start using the drop shot, come at the net a bit more? Um, have a bit more control. He seemed to red line the ball too early in the rallies um, in conditions that didn't suit that style of play. Tenny Sangren, he fought fire with fire when... When uh, Berrettini was coming back in the match, 
uh, Sangren had, had had to go toe to toe with him, and he did. He served 22 aces, um, but he just had more control. He shot better defence, and he forced the errors out of Berrettini, which saw him in in a five set thriller. Stefano Stitzer passes into round three. Um, Philip Gorschreiber had to pull out before the match with a muscle injury, um, so good luck to him with his recovery. Uh, Stitzer pass, I think he would have been provided with a good stern test uh, in that match. Uh, he's obviously made a big run at this tournament last year, so he's got plenty of fans over here in Melbourne. He will look to make a big run. Uh, so he's in round three. Obviously, hasn't had the match uh, match court time that the other players have, but that might benefit him down the line. And last year, Roger Federer, Federer, he beat Philip Krajnovic in straight sets again. Another comprehensive win for Federer. I said at the start of the week that if he was to make a big run, uh, if he wanted to become 21 Grand Slam champion, then he would have to conserve energy in this first four rounds. He'd have to win them in straight sets, less than two hours. He'd have to serve well, return well, and so far he's ticking all them boxes. He looks in uh, brilliant shape. He's playing as well, as I've seen over the last couple of years. He's moving very well. He looks full of confidence, as Roger always does. And obviously he's got that brilliant backing of the Melbourne crowd. Uh, so going forward for Roger, um, just keep cruising through this for as long as he can. His draw's starting to open up as well. Uh, his Shapovalov's already fell out the side of the draw. Her catch he was meant to face next round uh, would have been a tough match. He went as well. So the draw seems to be opening up for Federer. Uh, if he can get to this quarter final, semi final stages uh, without getting out of first and second gear, then why couldn't Roger uh, win this Melbourne title again? Looking ahead to tomorrow, we've got some crackers again. Uh, Monfils against Karlovic. Ivo Karlovic uh, became the oldest man in the Open Europe to win a to win a first round match at the, at the Grand Slam uh, at 40 years old um, and obviously Monfils is playing to get your popcorn out always entertaining to watch uh, great server, so unorthodox um, just a great player to watch and that should be a, should be an entertaining match um, what I'm looking forward to watching is Stan Vavrinka uh, back to full fitness now and as I said the other day I thought he looked absolutely brilliant in his match in his three set uh, win over Jeremy Shardy uh, thing about Stan, if, if he gets to the semi-final and final stages, we all know about his mentality. Uh, he's got a brilliant record at the last stages of Grand Slams when he reaches them. Yeah, he's won three Grand Slams. Um, I'm not quite sure the courts are playing perfectly for Stan and the wind would uh, possess a problem for him, but if Stan's got so much experience, he knows how to adapt, he knows how to vary his game up and he's got all the shots in the book. So I expect him to come out on top over Seppi. Uh, Seppi's a a good, a good strong player, uh, big serve, uh, fights hard, and he's had a, a few upsets over over the years in Grand Slam, so he'll be looking to force another one uh, today later today. Um, Nick Kyrgios faces Gilles Simon. I think that's a great matchup stylistically. Uh, Kyrgios, the flashy player that we all know, he's got that, got that big serve, the big ground strokes. Uh, Simon's got fantastic defence, good variations. Um, He'll bring Kyrgios uh, to the net, move him around the court, try and keep Kyrgios on the move, not let him set himself uh, and open fire with that forehand. Uh, Simon's got power himself on both wings. He's a very underrated player in my opinion. Moves very well. Um, I think he could have a he could have a good week. But that'll be a great matchup. I, I tip him Kyrgios uh, just to come out on top. He's got that crowd behind him. He's been playing very good tennis at the minute, um, and his big serve. Uh, gives them that advantage if it was to go to tie breaks, uh, which I'm expecting to see. Um, also in action tomorrow, we've got the world number one, Rafael Nadal, looking to move to round three. Uh, the Austrian Dominic team, again, looking to make a big run. I was saying the other day about them having to start making big runs at tournaments other than the French Open. Uh, he's already reached the French Open final twice and lost on both occasions, Rafael Nadal. But other than that, he hasn't really made his market. Wimbledon, the US Open, or the Australian Open. So that'll be something that Dominic will be looking to do this year to move into the top three, top four, even maybe win a Grand Slam. And Daniel Medvedev, many people's picks this week uh, to win his maiden Grand Slam, uh, be the breakthrough man for the next gen. Um, him or Sitsa Pass, looking like the front runners, although Zverev started as well, uh, well as well with a three set win the other day. But Medvedev, he looked, he looked um, in great, great nick the other day when he beat Francis Tia four. It was a tough first round opponent, but he came through that one in good fashion, um, and he'll be looking to press, progress to round four, round three, sorry. Um, 
so yeah that's about it i'll be back tomorrow to review day four and see you tomorrow